While I haven't spawned yet during the golden age of pixel art from the 1980s to 1990s, my most precious possession as a kid was easily my Nintendo DS. Not only did it satisfy my Pokemon addiction, I could also experience absolute classics like Castlevania, Dragon Quest, Chrono Trigger and many other games with beautiful pixel art. As loyal subscribers will know, I'm building an RPG powered entirely by LLMs. But wouldn't it be cool to replace the ASCII art with actual sprites? However, as my only artistic exposure is reading manga before going to sleep, the odds of me making good pixel art are lower than Kanye dropping a number one album this year. So I thought, what if not only the game itself was powered by an AI, but also the graphics. If an LLM would describe enemies, which a diffusion model could turn into sprites, you would get a unique experience each time you played. In the beginning, I knew almost nothing and had to fully immerse myself into the world of AI image generation. Coming from the LLM community, where the tutorials are often very technical and people train models to increase safety, document retrieval rates or reason better about medical knowledge, I had a bit of a culture shock when I noticed that the AI image generation community is almost the complete opposite. Instead of sharing models on Hugging Face, fine tunes are shared on sites like Civit AI and if someone is in the same room as you, you better keep that no safer work filter on. Instead of Python scripts and notebooks, drag and drop UIs are the norm and most tutorials I found train models for purposes you wouldn't get out of me if you put a gun to my head. You might think working in AI means training models while making a lot of money. But unless you are an elite OpenAI researcher, 99% of your time will be spent down in the sewers, writing web scrapers, creating data pipelines, labeling data. So let's get started with creating our own data sets. When it comes to pixel art, I feel nothing beats the enemy sprites from one of my favorite RPGs, Dragon Quest. Which is not surprising since they were designed by the legendary Dragon Ball creator Akira Toriyama. Just look at classics such as Slime, Fungul, and me before drinking my first white monster of the day. Using this as training data is a legally gray area. So if I don't make another video in a few months, make sure to start a petition or something. My unpaid intern, I mean CloudSonet 4.5, wrote a script to cut the sprite sheets I found, upscale them and added a purple background to make it easier for the model to learn. You should then label each image using keywords that describe the aspects you want to vary during inference, so don't describe the style itself. Labeling is easily the most boring part, so I tried to outsource it, but according to Llama4, this is a troll, this is a robot, and this is a frog. So I spent another four hours manually labeling my data because an inconsistent data set will easily break your model. Although lots of text to image models exist, I want to run the trained model on my MacBook. So for me, the only two options were Stable Diffusion 1.5 and XL. At first, I thought these models generated images by trying to predict pixels that match the meaning of your prompt, but this was completely wrong. I was surprised to learn that Diffusion actually starts from pure noise, with the model predicting which noise to remove and repeating this until you generated an image. During training, we pick an image from our dataset, add a bit of noise to it, make our model predict how much noise was added given our prompt, and then simply adjust the model parameters to make a better prediction. So our model has three main components. First, the UNet, which you can think about like the janitor that learns to remove noise from your images. Then we have the text encoder, which takes your prompt like well-formed anime girl and turns it into a list of numbers that the UNet can understand. Finally, a variational autoencoder, which is able to turn any image into a lower dimensional space and then also reconstruct it. You can think about it like turning a painting into a sketch and then that sketch back into the original painting. A breakthrough of the original stable diffusion paper was actually that making the unit 
work in this lower dimensional space not only makes the model faster but also increases the quality so you can think about it like having the janitor work in a small apartment room compared to a giant mansion to train a stable diffusion model you will need at least 24 gigabytes of vram so the google collab free tier isn't gonna save us this time thankfully a viewer of the channel is building a fine-tuning platform called enverge and was kind enough to let me join the beta program which got me access to an a100 i could use for training so now that we have sponsored the next leather jacket of jansen we have to make an important choice do we use a gui for training like automatic 1111 or python with the diffusers library however a side effect of studying computer science is that you get terrified of guis to the point that 24 percent of professional developers use fib so i adapted the training code from the diffusers library wrote some shell scripts to organize my runs i also decided to train a lora which is a set of low rank weights applied on top of the model as this is much faster and requires less data than training the entire diffusion model as you can see there are a lot of parameters you can vary so at the end of my experimentation i had done 31 training runs and with each training run taking around more than an hour i probably increased global temperature by another degree but let me share some things i learned for training pixel art you should keep the rank of your lora matrices very low the default rank is only four but when i increase this to 64 the model wouldn't make something remotely close to pixel art even when lowering it to rank 32 the model couldn't even replicate the purple background and also the sprites itself were a bit chopped so giving the model more learning capacity actually led to worse results i would also recommend training for at least 10,000 steps as after 5,000 steps you can see that the sprites themselves look like they have been in a traffic accident the data set itself is also extremely important my first training runs had an llm labeled data set and the model failed to learn concepts finally stable diffusion xl is also much better than 1.5 even when trained on the exact same data set 1.5 just generates incoherent pixel art and also often fails at producing the purple background surprisingly the best model i trained had a very basic setup just table diffusion excel a data set of 512 by 512 pixel images a normal learning rate a batch size of one and just the default lora rank the first time i used this model and it generated a sprite that wouldn't look out of place uh, playing a game as a child on my Nintendo DS, I felt an incredible sense of accomplishment. Just a few years ago, this task of AI-generated sprites seemed almost impossible for AI, and here I was, generating it on my own MacBook. So let's do a quick montage of monsters I generated with this model. While it's clear that this model won't replace artists like the incredible Akira Toriyama, I find it very amazing that it can generate some unique sprites given the right prompting. Anyways, thanks for watching this video and if my channel would suddenly disappear, I probably got striped by Square Enix, so make sure to free Pookie.